Welcome everyone to brand new series. My name is Greg and in this series we will be making a grid map which you can easily repurpose for any type of game later on. Before we begin I want to ask you to subscribe, like and check my Patreon. Your support allow me to produce those videos. Subscription will make sure that you will not miss any new episodes later on. 2D grid is an important system which allows you to create all kinds of video games. Everything from puzzle games to RPGs to Rogue likes and tactical war games etc etc. 2D grid is even used in real life applications for simulations. So the application for this uh, system is wide and because of that we should know how to use and create one. In this series one of my main aim is to create a nice grid system which will be easy to expand and fit for your own type of game you are going to make. Besides grids uh, in itself, this series will be covering navigation on this grid, reading and saving maps and pathfinding. And we are creating this grid system for future projects on this channel. Today we will begin by implementing the grid itself. Create a new project with 2D preset. But I want you to note something. What we are going to implement is going to work both with 2D and 3D environment. You will just have to repurpose the visual part of the code for 3D world. I might even do the tutorial on how to do this uh, for 3D environment later on. Create a grid tile map on the scene. Let's set up our style map first. Open tile palette and create tile palette. After that I created those two small sprites. This is just white and black squares of the size 32 by 32. Nothing special. Then add them to tile palette and set the size of the unit to fit on the tile map. This is it. We can now draw stuff on the tile map. Good. Now we want to start implementing our grid. You see we will be using Unity tile map grid only as visual representation of the world. Let's select the tile map and create and add a new script called grid. Open the newly created script. Inside declare a serialized field called height and length of type integer. Then declare a 2D array of bulls. This is our grid with our current data stored in it. We will change this array later on, so it will store an actually useful data for us later on. Create new method called init with two parameters, one for height and one for length. This method will initiate the grid in our game and process everything we need at the initiation of the grid system. Go back to the editor. Create and add new script called Grid Manager. This script will be responsible for managing grid on this scene. It will be responsible for visualization and updating the state of the tile map. On start, let's store reference to the grid and tile map.
Let's add the required component attribute to the grid manager. Now inside the grid manager on start let's go in it of the grid with any size you want. Let's pass let's say 25 to 12. And let's assign the length and height to our variable inside grid. Actually, we can remove serialize field attribute from our variables. Then inside grid manager create and call update tile map. Now we want to read the grid and assign the tiles uh, to the tile map. For that we will have to make length and height public inside the grid. Cycle through length and height and set tile on tile map. First parameter is the position on the tile map. But the next parameter require a tile to be specified. So let's create serialized field of type tile base and set it in the editor. Good. As you can see we are creating the tile map of specified size in the grid manager. But right now it is virtually useless to us. It just store of a bunch of falses inside the 2D array. So let's create a new method called set inside the grid with parameters of x and y position and bool which will represent the new state.
Inside simply set the state of the grid in the past position to a new past state. So now we can tell to our program that we want to change the state of the specific cell in the specific position to a new state. And now we can set the state inside the grid manager. But if we launch right now, we will see no difference at all. Now when we are visualizing the grid, we want to get the state out of our grid. So create a new method called get, which will return bool from the position. So when we are visualizing the grid on tile map, we want to specify that if the tile is true or false, we will use different tile bases. So create new field for a tile. So one tile base will be for false position and one for true position. Good. One last touch. We want to make sure that if you are trying to access or interact with something outside of the scope of the grid, it will not process the request. To do this, inside the grid create new method called check position. And inside we want to make sure that our past position is inside the boundaries of the grid. Go check position inside set and get.
So for testing purposes inside the grid manager, let's try to set our style in let's say minus one X position. It will make so our style will not show up on the screen. And let's set it to our length limit minus one. So in our case it is nine. We will see that our style will show up on the edge. And if we are trying to use our limit of the length, it will disappear. This should make sense to you because in programming indexation starts from zero. So the array of the size 10 will have limit elements in position from zero to nine. Good. As last touch, let's add a warning message to our grid when you are trying to interact with, with it outside the boundaries. Okay, I just realized something. We already has a grid component in the Unity. So let's rename our grid script to something else. Let's call it grid map. When you are renaming scripts, make sure you don't forget to rename the class inside the script to match the new name. We will use must rename so it will rename all the references which is already present in our project. So hold Ctrl and press R two times, then print the name and press Enter. Good. Now inside the grid manager, you will see that already existing references are already renamed. Let's test this to make sure everything is working fine. Good. As you can see, everything is intact and functional. Great, in next episode we will be expanding functionality of our style map. This is it for this episode. If you have any questions or any ideas about code, please leave your comments below. If you are interested in seeing what will come out of this, please subscribe. If you want to support further, you can find my Patreon in the description. Special thank you to Stefan and Cameron Smith for their generous support. With best regards, see you in the next episode.